Have you ever driven on a street here in the islands and wondered, how did that street get its name? Well, that's why every Thursday, or as we say in Hawaiian, po'aha, we have our Aloha Authentic segment, which helps to answer that question and share stories behind the given names. This month, we are highlighting streets that carry the names of cultural practices in our islands. This week, we're talking about weaving. In the Ahupua'a of Kalihi and in the Moku of Kona here on Oahu lies a street that captures the name of the ancient cultural art form in Hawaii known as Ulana or weaving, the street being Ulana Street. Throughout the islands, we hear the term Lau Hala, Lau meaning leaf, and Hala refers to the Hala tree or pandanus in English. The leaves from this tree are harvested, stripped, and softened before the weaving process can begin. Weaving practitioners create amazing products with these leaves, both traditional and modern. Traditional pieces include mats and baskets, while modern pieces include hats and fans, to bracelets, earrings, and even water bottle covers. Lauhala was not the only type of leaf used in, these, in this art of weaving. Other leaves used include coconut leaves, or lau niu in Hawaiian, and even kaie ie, a highly respected vine that grows only in very healthy rainforests. Did you know? Now you do. Love it. And I love that we're breaking this down because, of course, you always see Lauhala at craft fairs and yeah. it's so beautiful. And I mean, you just know, just looking at it by first glance, that so much hard work went into creating these beautiful pieces. So I'm excited to learn more about it. And also, I have a few questions for you. So you mentioned that a lot of preparation goes into it the harvesting, the softening. How long does that whole process take? Now, I dabbled in Lauhala just for a few months at one point, and I did experience that preparation process compared to the actual weaving process. I'm sure other weavers will agree where the preparation process is the longest and most tedious. From harvesting leaves, some leaves have thorns on them, some don't. So if you use mm -hmm. leaves that have thorns, that includes another process of having to actually strip off the thorns of it, and then you're stripping into pieces, you're putting it through a, uh, well, you're very, the different various ways of softening leaves, and that can just take hours and hours. So by the time you actually get to the weaving part, the weaving part goes by pretty fast, actually. Pretty fast in yeah. comparison, <laughs> right? All right, very cool. And we're seeing images of the Lauhala on our screen. And then, of course, we've seen it in person. When you see it with multiple colors, are the, are the multicolors like green, reds, is that natural? There are, so those vibrant colors are actually dyed. It's a more of a contemporary oh. um, means of creating more designs throughout the piece. Tr uh, naturally, there are various browns of various colors of brown. Um, there's one that they refer to as the red lauhala leaf, which is actually more of a brownish color, a darker brown compared to the more beige color that we see most lauhala products made from. So there are some colors that are natural, but those vibrant different variations of colors are all dyed. All, all dyed. Okay, very cool. And okay, I'm going to be real. When you go to the craft fair and you see the lauhala products, they really aren't the cheapest. So, so why is that? Yeah. And that's something definitely we all realize when we get yeah. down, like, oh, I want something, and boom, oh, the prices, I mm -hmm. can't afford that. But if you think about the amount of time and effort that's put in, yep. now, we're, we're going to be speaking with a, a guest later on who's a sixth-generation Lauhala weaver, and just listening to the stories of, of the amount of time, the aloha, the protocols that come into making a piece. Traditionally, there's a lot of different protocols that we don't necessarily follow by today because it takes too long. Mm. So taking into account all that mana that's put into it, all that energy, all that love and aloha, that has a value to it. And for those, a lot of our um, practitioners try to make a business or a living from this. So you have to find a balance between making a livelihood, doing what you love to do while perpetuating your culture, and making it affordable for peace, for people and, and variations of communities. So that's where the price comes in. It's really the time and the effort and the aloha that you put into it. Right, and, and I think a lot of people, well, most people here recognize that too. Mm -hmm. You know you, you know how much has been put into it and that's why, yes, the lauhala products might be a bit expensive, but they're usually gone from those yeah, craft fairs. So, <laughs> so you always have to get down there first because again, they are so beautiful. Okay, so you have another segment coming up that you just we, mentioned. Yes. So what are we gonna be talking about? We have a sixth generation weaver, Keowa Nelson, who's gonna be coming in and he has a company called Aihala LLC. Um, so he makes these beautiful pieces and you can see him at Royal Hawaiian Center every week doing <laughs> workshops and stuff. So we were able to snag him in for a bit. He'll be coming in during our next segment in about 
10 minutes or so to kind of give more of that practice and demonstrate some weaving skills. Perfect. And I see him setting up some beautiful <laughs> pieces right now. So again, you're definitely going to want to check this one out. Stick and then around. real quick, I know we have to wrap up, but remind us again of your Aloha Authentic new service. Yes. So of course, there's a lot of advertisements and marketing that takes place that uses Hawaiian names. And a lot of the times they're not necessarily pronounced correctly. So Aloha Authentic wants to urge you, if you have any Hawaiian names that you need help pronouncing, email that to me at kamaka.pili at kchon2.com and I'll be more than happy to give you back the correct pronunciation to how to say that Hawaiian word or the name. So wonderful and so important. Yes. So thank you for that service. Mahalo. This month on Aloha Authentic, we are highlighting the streets that bring attention to various cultural practices in Hawaii. This week, we are talking about the art of weaving, or in Hawaiian, we say ulana. And what better way to talk about weaving than by having a sixth generation Lauhala weaver by the name of Keoa Nelson in the studio this morning. Good morning, Keoa. Hey, good morning. Mahalo Nui for, for joining us early oh, this morning and bringing pleasure, all pleasure. your things. So, I mean, we've already said sixth generation Lauhala yes. weaver. That's amazing. Can you share a little bit about your lineage and where you come from? Sure. So, I'm um, from Kona, uh, Napo'opo'o Kona. Uh, my grand, both my great grandmothers on my parents' side were weavers. Um, and so, we actually have some of my great grandmother's stuff tools here with me today. Um, and so I actually learned from my grandmother as well as her cousin as well here on Oahu. Yeah. So when we talk about traditions of weaving, does that include like different styles of weaving? Mm -hmm. Like can you tell by just looking at a particular hat who may have weaved it or the lineage that that came from? Um, sometimes I can. Like there's certain techniques that uh, weavers would use and I'm like, oh, that's anti so-and-so or that's anti so-and-so. Um, so yeah, just depending on who you learn from. There's a lot of good kumu out there. Yeah. So in our first segment, we talked about preparation and the, the lengthy period of that. Do you agree with the preparation period is a lot longer than the weaving actual oh, weaving Almost process? definitely. Um, I say that the most critical point for weaving is actually the collection and the preparation of the leaf. Mm -hmm. And so that uh, takes the most time. Now we also mentioned that you do workshops at Royal Hawaiian Center weekly. Now. I try to bring this up with a lot of different cultural practitioners and different arts is sharing our culture a very ancient traditional practice with visitors where is the line for you personally of sharing too much mm -hmm. and and becoming a, maybe a little bit um, a, not a threat but a little bit dangerous of sharing too much knowledge right right um, <clears throat> I think it's important for us to share so that we can get our culture out into the world uh, so a lot of times when I teach, it's uh, more of the contemporary pieces. Um, as a student, it takes a lifelong learning process to get to the point where we can actually teach people. And so some of the uh, older techniques or some of our more older traditions, we tend to reserve for our students who are lifelong learners. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we did share before, at least last week when we talked about hula, that nowadays it's, pretty, it's a faster timeline to be get in your ranks, I guess, quote unquote, where traditionally it took you literally a lifetime exactly. just to become exactly. a little bit more ma'a or acclimated to the exactly. practice. So we see a lot of very uh, various products here, and I've also seen these products on that Mama Wearable Art yes. Show. So can you share a little bit of what you have on the table? Yeah, so I actually have some hats that I made, and the hats that I have here are more contemporary pieces and not our traditional. Uh, the black color here is actually dyed, as you mentioned earlier. Um, a lot of our colors are dyed uh, rather than the natural. And so one of the things that I like to do as part of our segment is, or a part of my, my culture, is to bring things into contemporary piece where it becomes more uh, relative to the, to the day. Mm -hmm. So we have bow ties, a uh, top hat, and a cummerbund that was featured in the wearable art show, the Mama wearable art show this past year. And I know you mentioned with this, this particular block that you use for your hats is 150 years old, you said? Yeah, so this belonged to my great grandmother. Um, the tools here we use for stripping the laohala to get to the leaves. And so that's uh, hers as well. So when we talk about, we, we answered that question, I was talking with Kelly about the price of each laohala product being pretty pricey at times. And talking about the mana, I mean, having something 150 years old from your ancestors and putting that mana, I'm assuming that that's definitely included within that mana that's contributed within exactly, the piece. Exactly, exactly. So it, it's really important, not just the aloha that you put into it, but also the mana that carries with me from our kupuna, our ancestors. Awesome. So where can, is there a website we can direct people to find out more yeah, information? Yeah, so my website is www.ihala.com. All right, on. Thank you very much, Keo, for Thank being you. in the studio this morning.